I mentioned it before, everyone has now seen Hamilton. So I, I know we're going to have a debate internally amongst our friend group tomorrow, but I think it's also a good topic to talk about on the podcast because, you know, it's not just Hamilton, but so going back, I think um, I'm a huge Lin-Manuel Miranda fan. So he went to the same college that I did, uh, Wesley University. He graduated oh, wow. in 2004. What are you doing? Oh, okay. This is the wiki? Okay. Yeah. No, don't. Let's, uh, let's not share the wiki during, like, this segment. Yeah, okay. But, like, yeah, make sure I'm talking, saying the right stuff. So, yeah, he graduated in 2004 from Wesleyan. So when I got there in 2008, he had already came and left. But apparently, he wrote his first musical in the Heights while he was he was at Wesleyan, and he performed it while he was at Wesleyan. So when I got there, I I heard about in the Heights, but I didn't really care. And then during my the summer in between sophomore and junior year, I was in New York for the summer, and my mom visited me, and she heard about Lin Manuel Miranda and the fact that he went to Wesleyan. So she bought tickets to In the Heights. On, it was on Broadway during that time. And I was like, yeah, whatever, I'll go. I didn't really know much about it. I, didn't, I thought all musicals on Broadway were pretty whack. But I went to it regardless, anyways. And it was a, it was a, a huge eye-opener. Well, I don't know about all musicals, but In the Heights, it was incredible. So it was um, a lot of it, like, like Hamilton, it's you know, kind of ingrained in hip-hop. They're rapping a lot also singing a lot it's very melodic it's very catchy very good story like the the songwriting is very witty it's very smart very clever uh it was just an incredible musical and i don't i had never really fucked with musicals before so when to, once that happened i became a huge lin-manuel miranda fan and then soon after that he started working on so that was in 2010 i think and then soon after that, he started working on Hamilton as a, just like a hip hop album, an album or something, not a full musical, I don't think, as an album. So he wrote that first song, uh, the song that Aaron Burr sings kind of throughout the whole musical. And he performed it. He was invited to Obama's like correspondence dinner at the White House. And he performed that song. And that was like, I was, I was, when that came out, I was promoting that. I was trying to show everybody. Uh, that that song because it was inc- it was fucking incredible, and so uh, from that point I was a huge Lin Manuel Miranda fan, and also he's in a another freestyle improv group called Freestyle Love Supreme, which is him and this other guy Chris Jackson who is in in the Heights. He was also in Hamilton. He was George Washington in Hamilton. So a couple of those those a couple in that group had their a lot of different like projects or or groups they they were in, and so. At that time, I was a huge Lin Manuel Miranda fan, but when Hamilton came, eventually came out, I was I was gone from New York. I don't remember if I was gone from New York or whatever, but I never got a chance to see Hamilton. Also, the the tickets were extremely expensive, so I just literally never got a chance to see it. Although I knew it was incredible without having to see it. And then, so this past Friday, it came out on Disney Plus, and it was just a recorded version of a performance in 2016 it was all all the original cast it wasn't like a movie obviously you know but i'm just telling people who are listening it wasn't like a movie version of hamilton it was just a recorded performance from 2016 so it was the full broadway you know version and i felt like they did a a pretty good job in terms of the the recording they made me feel like i was actually at the theater watching it I, i kind of got the same feeling and a reaction that I did when I saw In the Heights in, in, on Broadway. I had that same feeling when I was watching it on TV. So I feel like they did a really good job at that. I was kind of worried that it would be a lot different experience just watching it. But it, it felt very similar. And Hamilton, you know, I, I thought, it, I may be biased, I thought it was equally as good. I thought In the Heights and Hamilton were both equally as good. And in the Heights, you know, it didn't have a lot of those um, Broadway actors or actresses that were on in Hamilton, like on that level, Hamilton had a lot of bigger stars for sure. So that was a huge difference. But in terms of the writing and the singing and the, the rapping, I thought they were both equally as good. 
So that's kind of also why I'm bummed out that no one's going to be able to see in the Heights. That's not going to happen. So I'm, I'm bummed out about that. But um, I liked both of them equally, both of the incredible. A lot of big stars in Hamilton, and we can go over who you like the best and stuff. But, I mean, for sure, I, I like Lin-Manuel Miranda. I know everyone's saying that. Well, some people are saying that he wasn't as good as the other stars, like Leslie Odom Jr. and some other people. But a lot – and so him, Chris Jackson, Leslie Odom Jr., the guy who played James Madison, the guy who played Jefferson, all were incredible. Um, so I don't, I don't know what you thought about it, but I thought – I was very glad that it came on Disney+. Plus. It was, exceeded my expectations. I, and I wish the same was done for In the Heights because that was equally as good. What was In the Heights about? What was it based off of? So Lin-Manuel Miranda was the main character, and he was the owner of a bodega in Washington Heights in New York City. That's what I was, yeah. And it was just basically about his everyday life, owning the shop, and all of his friends and family were also living in, in the Heights, in Washington Heights. And during the story, someone wins the lottery, um, like $96,000. It's a, a very small amount for the lottery, but someone wins the lottery and they're trying to figure out what they're going to do, like whether they're going to stay, whether the person who wins the lottery would stay in the neighborhood, but give money to certain things or whether they would pack up and leave. Just about growing up, you know, not wealthy, but then winning the lottery and what they're going to do from that point on. So it's very, as obviously it's much more relatable than Hamilton. So it was different in that sense, but I thought both were equally as good. Yeah, wow. So you, you go deep with Lin Manuel. Yeah, man. He's the fucking man. I think Lin Manuel Miranda is one of the, I think one of the most creative people that I can think of off the top of my head. Yo, it's they, cra- yeah, it's crazy to, to write and, write and star. Yes. In in a Broadway play like that, that's yes. that's upper echelon of creativity right there. Yeah, like one of the biggest of all time. Like I don't, I don't know how you think of how involved was he in like the music right, like in, not the lyrics, but the actual. Yeah, so I know like for both writing. of them, and especially in the Heights, I know. So he started off writing everything himself, and like there was a version that he pretty much had complete control over, and that like, he did himself completely. But once it got close to Broadway or on Broadway, other people would s- stepped in and went over all the songs, all the lyrics, and things got changed a lot from what he wrote to what it actually became on Broadway. So obviously everything was his idea, but in terms of the lyrics or make it sound better, a lot of people had a say in, in how it changed. So the, the final product wasn't hit, like 100% his because other people who may have been more i don't i don't want to say talented but more in tune with what it should sound like on broadway or whatever had a say in, in what it ended up being yeah i mean for for me hamilton like i need to watch it again it is difficult for me to to listen and follow along with story to lyrics but i do feel like watching it because i watched hamilton live and oh, when did. i watched it the first time i was yeah. like like, wow, like I was so like overwhelmed with emotions, but it was difficult for me to understand everything that was happening because of how fast pace it was. Yeah. Whereas sure. most Broadway musicals, it's like, you know, there's like a couple of words in it and it, it's, it's a lot slower. Yeah. So yeah. in that case, I was just like, Oh my God. Like I was like listening to it as like a rap battle and just like, it was so like that rap battle scene was so tight. Oh, incredible. And, and yeah, everything about it was so different and so unique, but I did find it difficult to follow along just because me personally, I don't even listen to lyrics ever. And, and the reason right. I can understand Broadway is because it's so slow and it's just like putting in putting music in slow motion. So in that case, I can, you know, more easily follow along. And right. then when it came out in Disney plus format, I, I went, I put, I put, you know, closed captions on immediately oh, so I could follow yeah, I along. Okay. I'm and it was, so. it was, it was incredible. I only watched the first half because it was, you know, I think three hours and plus yeah. long. Right. And I definitely need to watch the second half 
Um, yeah, I feel like uh, David Diggs is incredible. Thomas Jefferson. Oh, he was he was Madison, right? Or was he Jefferson? I forget who was who. Well, Jefferson and – Marquise de Lafayette, Thomas Jefferson. He was Jefferson, right. So Diggs was, was Madison. But they were, you know, partners throughout. Yes. Yeah. They were Madison both. was uh, – yeah, James Madison, it looks like, was – let Diggs. me. Uh, what? I thought you just said Dick. It was no, 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 no. Diggs was Thomas Jefferson. Really? The guy who was doing the the battles. I thought that was that was. Um, fuck! Now I'm getting confused. I thought Jefferson was the the person who was not battling, but Madison and was this, doing it all his behalf. This is when I'm gonna screen share. Okay. Perfect. So yeah, David Diggs it says is Marquise de Lafayette. Okay, out of that Thomas backwards. Jefferson. Okay, okay. James Madison was. You want to take a shot at that name? No, no. Oak. We'll call him. We'll Oak. call him Oak. Okay. All right, I had that backwards. For some reason, I thought Thomas Jefferson was the higher authority, and James Madison was sp- speaking on Jefferson's behalf, but it's the other way around. Yeah. Can you see this page now? Yeah, I can see that. So there. Yeah. This guy this guy was really good too. He Oak was, great. was sick. Very good. Yeah. Um Chris Jackson. George Washington was Christopher Jackson. Yeah, so he's the man. He was in In the Heights with Lynn Manuel Miranda. He's in a freestyle group with Lynn also. He a great singer, can also rap. Very talented guy. What's their freestyle group? It's called Freestyle Love Supreme. So they have a bunch of clips on YouTube. And so I think Lynn started. I don't know who exactly started it, but go to, yeah, go to YouTube. And then, but since then, there has been other people who have been in and out, it, in, in and out of it. <coughs> and there was another pretty famous gentleman who's in it, who's also in Hamilton at the beginning, but he was replaced. I forget his name, but if, if you go back to that chart you were looking at before, eventually you can see it. But yo, go go to okay. Let's see, uh, Aaron Burr. Click that first that first name for Aaron Burr. This guy, yeah. So he was he's he was in it. Freestyle Love. Oh, he's also. he's famous. He's famous. Yeah, he's been in a bunch of shit. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, there's a lot of big names in in here. They're at one point part of the show. And like, also as we said, Wait, King who's George. Bukash and Bukar? And Bukar, I feel like I've seen, I've loved him. And in... yeah, what else? Let's look at what else he's been in. Bukash and Bukar, Pitch Perfect, Mike and Dave need wedding, whatever. Million Dollar Arm, Rocket Science. I feel like I've seen him in both Pitch Perfect and Mike and Dave Need Wedding Dates. Yeah. And I enjoyed both of those. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Brockmar. Oh, Brockmar, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the uh, the second announcer in Brockmar, and he was mm. very, very funny. Yep. Yeah, he's good. He's real good. And then we got King George III, Jonathan Groff, Man God and Mindhunter on Netflix, best show on Netflix. And that was very surprising. I didn't know his, his Broadway background. So it was very surprising to see him singing in, in uh, Hamilton. Oh, what do, you, what do you know him from? Mindhunters on Netflix. Oh, my He's God. You're guy. so right. Yeah, yeah. A completely different person. He's yeah. like very eclectic and very kind of socially awkward and quiet, but like thoughtful. Yeah, I was losing it. When King George came on and started drooling. Yeah. You notice that was hilarious. Yeah, yeah, that was Slobbering great. King. Yep. That was good. I also really liked um, The Sisters. Yep. Angelica, The Sisters were, I thought, incredible. Yeah. All around great. I'm, I'm probably going to watch it again. <laughs> 